But I am not here today as a medical professional. I'm here today as a father. Three weeks ago, my infant son and daughter, Magdalene, who is battling leukemia, were exposed to measles. I also hope that we can prevent um, more families from getting measles altogether. Prevention is simple. Vaccinate. As immunization rates drop, the herd immunity starts to break down. And this herd immunity is the only thing protecting my two young children from being exposed to measles or whatever the next outbreak is. That was Dr. Timothy Jacks, an Arizona pediatrician, testifying before a Senate committee about the whole notion of the rise in measles, perhaps correlating with the lack of vaccinations. Back with Miranda Khan, J.D. Hayworth with you now on America's Forum. Yeah, the measles exposure has caused both of the doctor's children, as you just heard, to endure a round of painful antibody shots. But they're that may be the least of their worries, J.D. There are several complications from measles, one which being pneumonia, which could be deadly given the fragile state of Maggie's immune system. Maggie, the daughter of Dr. Timothy Jacks, to whom he referred in that testimony as uh, having other medical challenges. Uh, joining us now for an in-depth analysis, we are pleased to call once again on Dr. Elizabeth Lee Vliet. She's a preventative medicine physician, was the former director of the Association of American uh, Physicians and Surgeons. Uh, Dr. Vliet, again, we are so pleased to have you here on America's Forum. You heard the Arizona pediatrician. Is this a lack of vaccinations or is there something else at work in terms of measles? Well, J.D., thanks so much for having me on with you again. I always enjoy your work and your shows and your astute commentary and insights. The issue really is much bigger than whether or not parents are vaccinating their children. The issue really comes down to the fact that the federal government has not been following our own immigration laws, and we had which I warned about in the spring of 2014, we had a flood of illegal border crossers that were not medically screened, that were not vaccinated, that were coming from countries, bringing a variety of invisible travelers like tuberculosis, measles, sleep, uh, Chagas disease, and a host of viral illnesses. The enterovirus D68 has been tracked to Central America outbreaks and one of the things that is being ignored in the focus on the current measles outbreak is the fact that it began with our own government not following its immigration policies. Now, what's significant about that is the government doesn't own our body as American citizens under our Constitution. We retain those rights and public health is a function of the states, not the federal government under our current, our constitution. However, immigration is a federal issue and that is where the failure and breakdown has occurred, leading to the public health crisis of the measles outbreak, the enterovirus D68 outbreak, and other problems that we've seen because of the illegal border crossers that are coming from countries where they haven't been vaccinated. So they've added to the problem. Now, I happen to think that there are many valid reasons for vaccination and there are individual reasons where vaccination may be a risk. I have patients who've had serious adverse reactions to vaccines, including Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is ascending paralysis. I've been through that with patients. So it comes down in my mind to not a political issue, but an individual medical issue that is best made between the patient and their physicians and looking at the totality of that patient person's health. It is not something that the federal government should be mandating across the board. That is a violation of our constitution and the fact that we own our bodies and we get to decide what we're going to do with taking medicine or not. Now, you can argue with that point of view, and you can say, well, the federal government has the right to tell us that. Well, if they have the right to tell us that, then they have the right to tell us everything we can eat or drink, 
and everything we can do with our bodies, which is not the way that our country was founded. Dr. Elizabeth Lee Valit, we thank you for your perspective on public health, personal responsibility, and what you believe to be the problem, not the lack of immunizations domestically, but with those who have come to our nation illegally. Dr. Vliet, we will call on you in the days ahead. And when we come back, more with former NBC News correspondent Ike Siemens and Alina Hernandez of Newsmax.